here, a truly gifted and a beautiful woman from England. Uh, she's starring right up the street at the Huntington Hartford Theater in the musical review called Side by Side by Sondheim. And she generously cons consented today, offered to sing the song that she does in the show by Stephen Sondheim that just stops the show cold over here every single night, every matinee. It never misses. And it truly works in this town. It's uh, from a show that Steve wrote called uh, Follies about a group of uh, ex Follies Beger girls who come back for a uh, reunion. And one of them sings about her life. And it works great in Hollywood because Hollywood understands this song. It's really about survival, about a woman who's been through it all, she's seen it all, and she says, and with it all, I'm still here. Here's the wonderful Millicent Martin. Bum times, I've seen them all, and my dear, I'm still here. Plush velvet sometimes, sometimes just pretzels and beer, but I'm here. I've stuffed the dailies in my shoes, strummed ukuleles, sung the blues, seen all my dreams disappear. But I'm here. I've slept in shanties, guest of the WPA. But I'm here. Danced in my scanties, three bucks a night was the pay. But I'm here. I've stood on bread lines with the best. Watched while the headlines did the rest In the depression was I depressed Nowhere near I met a big financier And I'm here I've been through Gandhi Windsor and Wally's affair and Andy, Mahjong and platinum hair, and I'm here. I got through Amy's Irish Rose, five Dion babies, major bows, had heebie-jeebies or babies back this year. I've been through Brenda Frazier, and I'm I'm almost through my mess. 
bravo, Millicent. That's lovely. Isn't that a wonderful performance? Millicent Martin, star of Side by Side by Sondheim. We'll come right back. What a nice feeling to be in a hit, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's wonderful. How long have you been doing this show, Millicent? It's almost two years now. Yes. And it all started as an idea in a little barn yes. somewhere in well, we the north of England, it, wasn't it? Well, it was in Bedfordshire. It was Clear Lane and Johnny Dankworth have a wonderful little theater in the grounds of their home where they work with young musicians from concert pianists right the way through to jazz musicians and anybody who is young who wants to study music they have a summer school there and they use this small theater so who said let's get out and get in well, the barn why like did we Judy do it right Garland, here. let's yeah. put on a show, Mickey. <laughs> well, it was, and David Kernan was originally appearing in a little night music right. in London, and he got together, Ned Sharon and Julia McKenzie and myself were all very close friends, and he said, uh, I think there's an evening of Stephen's music, so we did it on Sunday concerts. I was working in Absurd Person Singular, and Julia was in Norman Conquest, so the only day we could work was the Sunday, and we did it as fun. It, you did and the whole it, thing took off. It was amazing. It cost you twelve thousand dollars. That was to put it on in London. To put it on in it, London. Yes, it cost mm -hmm. us about a thousand to put it on in the barn. But when you moved it to London and yes. it cost twelve thousand, yes, how long did it take you to make your money back? We were paid off. We went into profits <laughs> after ten days. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> She's lovely. Where shows open in on Broadway and cost a million dollars and close in two days. I know. Well, we we packaged ourselves so that we... Well, it's so wonderfully done. I mean, it just to, to listen to uh, one composer's music mm -hmm. with so many variations and the, the pacing and the ideas. And but there you've said it. Uh, Stephen writes the most brilliant music and he does write such various things. And that's, you can only do an evening of somebody with that kind of talent so that you go everywhere from the song you've just heard right through to my silly one which is a parody on the girl from Ipanema. Oh, I tell well, you, a man I almost fell write, out of my chair yeah, laughing yeah. at that. Oh, that yeah. was so funny. It's sweet. And, and he's lovely because you feel you're never repeating yourself on the stage with his music. Hermione Gingold is the narrator. She sits yeah. to the side and, as you would expect, is uh, devastating. <laughs> she is so funny it's and tells stories exciting. about herself. So and then exciting. there is Millicent Martin who, of course, gives a great performance, as does Larry Kurt, who has so grown up in Isn't front of our wonderful? eyes on the stage from when we saw him first I think as the so gang leader in West Side Story, yes. and now he's this great leading man on Broadway. But with it all, he's such a good performer, and Barbie Human is yes, wonderful. Yes, she has the most wonderful, wide-range voice. I mean, she has about good three, three and a half octaves. And Your career has been an interesting one, Millicent. I guess we really heard of you first in America, nationally, uh, from That Was the Week That Was, that you did in England. Yes. Yes, right. I was the original singer, and we did sketches, and I did jazz numbers in the show. I was the only girl. There were eight men and myself, and the show took off in England beautifully, and we did two years of it. And it was a mm. great hit in England. Then it came to America, and we did it on television here. That's right. But at the time, I think it was Eisenhower years, the whole show was based on uh, uh, comedy sketches and uh, uh, songs yes. uh, uh, satirizing all of the politics of the nation and what was going on yep. in the country. And the, prob the problem was at that time, there was nothing to satirize. We were in a lull here. Oh, we've got lots going on. We had a good time. But had they, do they ha should they have the show now, it would be a scream. Yes, I think so. But the only problem is, of course, is everything is much easier now. When we did our show, we were talking about back in 1963. I mean, some of the things we said absolutely shocked everybody. Oh, I know. They'd never heard anything, you know, sort of idols toppling on television. I mean, now it is much easier, and we would have to go so far now to shock people. I think the show but a would wealth not have the of fun. material. Oh yes, right. it was wonderful to do because it was completely new. We didn't get any of the sketches or anything until the Saturday morning. And we had to memorize everything, an hour show by Saturday night. And of course, no commercial breaks because it was the BBC. So you couldn't sort of learn 10 minutes and then look at the script while the commercials were on. We had to go right through the hour. Chris Millicent also has, as you saw in that song, the ability 
sing and every word is perfectly clear so that you never have to think what is she singing yeah. it's just right there and you do those fast songs yes. how you do that and you and understand every, every word is perfectly clear well I, you used Hollywood to do a Noel Coward who taught me that oh. I was doing a, a show for him tonight at 8 30 and uh, I was going into another musical um, called the admirable Crichton and I had a very fast song in it and uh, he told me that you you don't sing it you have to get the lips to be very movable so before any fast songs i to get the lips moving so that i can work fast he was a great friend of oh, Avis yes, too. he started me on broadway i i did a present laughter with him and uh, wasn't he beautiful was. and i used to go to him i said master this english language is killing me i can't get out the th says never mind darling do press on <laughs> and I was my best press on. Do press on. When everybody was British, I was the only poor Hungarian. <laughs> on top of it, in Broadway, I had once a terrible time in America. I, I had a divorce and it was unpleasant. I sent him a telegram to Vevey and I said, Darling, I have problems. Can I come? And his answer was, Immediately. Yes. And I got on the plane and I arrived after much to do and I walked into his lovely house in Vevey. And he said, darling, was so-and-so naughty? I said, yes, master, he was terrible. And he said, never mind, darling, we'll rise above it, right? <laughs> and we did. <laughs> Two minutes after, we were on the floor laughing. Oh, no, wonderful. What a man. joy, what a great miss we have not having him here. Who discovered you? Did you struggle? Did you starve? I, I was one of the lucky ones. I never starved. I studied very fully. I studied classical ballet from 12 to 16. Mm. And then I didn't grow tall enough, <laughs> so then I had to change it through to uh, modern ballet. And uh, I started work when I was 16 in the chorus. I was in the dancing chorus for five years, and I studied Mary Martin and Vivian Blaine in American musicals in London, and uh, went on from there. But I was just, I was one of the lucky ones, I just kept working. You did a command performance for the Queen? Yes, I, I did two, one in, uh, one in 1954 and one in 1964. Which was the one with Nuriev? Oh, that was, we did, um, it was a royal command for the world wildlife. We did it at the talk of the town. And, oh, I uh, love that club. That's yes, it was wonderful. Club. And Tom Jones was on it. And, and the Hamilton. Queen goes to talk of the town? Well, it was a huge, uh, a huge evening for the wildlife. We had 27 heads of states, kings, queens, and princesses from all over the world. It was a marvelous evening. And uh, Nureyev was dancing, and... Uh, I was next to him in the lineup, and, and the Queen spoke to him and said, what are you dancing tonight? And he said, well, Thursday's child. He said, it's a little erotic. I hope it won't shock you. And at that time, I was doing, that was the week that was, and we did some very naughty things on the royal family. And the Queen turned to me and said, we don't shock easily, do we, Millicent? <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> And it was lovely because the royal family apparently loved that was a week and watched it they, all they the They never time. gave you trouble for all of them? No, they Because you are, satirized them all the time. They are the most wonderful family in the world. They have the best sense of humor. You have to have a good sense of humor to be head of a country. I mean, that is a hard work. That needs all the sense of humor you can muster. And to be on display. Oh, all the time. They and they are wonderful. They Prince so Charles fun. looks like he's going to be okay. Oh, he's not. Just jumped out. out of a plane recently with a parachute Bad on. And he's great. <laughs> there was a wonderful thing. Somebody put him on the, on the list of the ten worst-dressed men. And uh, there was a huge dinner the next night. And he arrived in the beautiful black trousers with patent leather shoes, and the white shirt with the wing collar, and the top hat and the white gloves and the stick, and a hacking jacket. A riding jacket Did with a leather patch. <laughs> <laughs> and on horseback. Ah, isn't uh, that good? Then I, I'm, I love them. And They're when wonderful. he takes over, it's going to be some excitement over yes, there. He's, he's very loved by the English people. Yes, because, he? because he's a great character. He's right. not out of touch with everybody. But he poor Princess Margaret is having so much problems now. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I just read about it. Yes, I just, I just hope that that will all fade into the background and that she I can have a peaceful life. Yes, so mm. do I. Yeah. What about you? What are you going to do? 
You got to continue on with the side by side by side, huh? Yes, we've we've just been extended here another month. Oh, you're going to be on the block oh, for another great. month. Great, yes, that'll be into. Because terrific. the bookings are so great, they've decided well, to do uh, another month. So that that's line lovely. up there. And then I would like to, of course, it's for me. I'm I'm starting a career again, having moved over here, having got married. Um, I would like You're to... now living in America? Yes. Did you yes. marry an American? I married a wonderful American. I met him. I yes. didn't know he was American. Yes. So I'm now living here and... All I... your girlfriends told you, marry an American, didn't they? Yes. They said, don't marry any more Englishmen. Get really? wise. Oh, had you... <laughs> Whoops. Had... Two before. Two before. Yes. So you change islands. Yes. I... Well, as I said, he had to be pretty special for me to get married a third time. Right. <laughs> and he is, so... Uh... Why did they tell you, why is an American husband so terrific? Oh, they spoil you so Do they? much. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. American they do, men are wonderful. All of them? Be warned. Why should men? Understand how lucky you are, ladies. <laughs> and English husbands tend... Well, it's... Hermione's discussed that a few times it's, it's, on the show. It's a little... Of course, hers are no longer living. <laughs> the last time she was here, I said, Hermione, her, her, one of her husbands wrote, a uh, cigarette that bears lipstick trace, uh, these foolish things. Yeah. And I said, oh, what a wonderful song. We sang it together right over here. Yeah. And we did it as a duet. And I said, oh, that's terrific. I said, is he still alive, Hermione? She said, that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> so we still don't know whether he is among us or he isn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're, no, they're sweet. I mean, they're very nice people. It's just an attitude that you belong a little to them and that um, you're there, as it were, to do the bidding and you are part of the collection. And... Uh, How depressing. Yes. And so it's nice to feel rather special. Oh, so And now with all the excitement in the world of women... Yes. Um, that won't hold too much longer, will it? I think so. I don't care what anybody says. If, if, if you have a wonderful man who treats you beautifully, you still appreciate it and right. you'll never... You saw it in the Orient. Didn't you hear that? Can you imagine those kind of movements? Are for, for, for years, women have tiptoed three feet behind their husbands in Japan. Now they're walking right next to them and they've got movements and big signs, them. right? Mm -hmm. We'll walk with you, you son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. We'll, we'll be back after this message. Millicent Mark. <laughs> A joyous show, and I thank you all for making it. So come back Good again soon, and we'll see all of you on Monday. Thank you. <laughs> Promotional consideration for the OJs furnished by Philadelphia International Records. Promotional consideration furnished by Delta Airlines, Pontiac, and True Value Hardware Stores. Next trip, fly Delta, the airline run by professionals. We fly to 92 cities every day. Delta is ready when you are. A beautiful new Pontiac Grand Prix, destined to take its place beside the classic Grand Prix of the past. Brand new looks, brand new luxury, brand new Prix by Pontiac. At True Value Hardware Stores, quality, selection, and service are why they're number one. Because True Value is more than just a name, it's their way of doing business.